blessed love and peace Ooh, we so pretty oh oh and we're still doing this so there is somewhat of an update uh, and some further information before we prepare for further uh, quietude waking up with pus in the eyes can't pus that might be a little bit of thing but like a creamy yellow substance from secretion from the eyes S yes it's not a, it's not healthy it's not right it needs healing we need healing I and I require healing so that being said um, we have things to say what uh, so um, We begin by just talking about um, we observe we we find some brethren and sistren on the on the interweb, uh, particularly in the mixed race community, particularly in the European region, particularly in the experience of what is called what them call Afropean. We probably heard that term before, but it's comparatively new in terms of a um, a regular frame of reference. But what we observe is that just within the past year, there's a considerable amount of, and particularly within the past few years. There's a considerable amount of discourse about talk and and whatever else uh, on this in this context of Afropean, being of African ancestry in the field in the theater of Europe, the stage. And there's a resonance with this, particularly uh, I can classify as that kind of sort of, even though the geography is somewhat distinct. A heritage is similar, and Afropean doesn't necessarily necessarily mean mixed race. It's a matter of being of African ancestry in a in a geography that is indigenously European. So that's it's an interesting uh, consciousness um, that doesn't have all the blood quantum uh, like qualifications and paper bag tests and all that shibboleth, the ubiquitous shibboleth. How about that? Anyways, big up to Johnny Pitts, brethren Johnny Pitts and sister and Monica from Poland, um, the old heads that have been doing it, keep doing it, um, people in harmony, mixed, out of Manchester, uh, intermixed, uh, Oxford Mixed Heritage Society, and further. Um, <clears throat> so there is encouragement in this respect uh, because we know from our personal experience and our, our reasonings through the decades of the, of the consciousness within Europe that is outside of this plantation mentality of the United States um, that has a certain in, intrinsic knowledge about the world because of the nature of the education. In America, things are excluded, like not to know what's going on in the world, not to know the history, just know enough to be a worker. In, in Europe, in addition, there's an increasing amount of intentionality of teaching children about world civilization because there needs to be a, a functional literacy because immediately in the theater of Europe and Asia and Africa and Middle East and additionally so have to know something about it just can't pretend and hide one's eyes and just drop bombs so um, so because of that like general there's a general knowledge that and a general familiarity about world civilization much further than the United States um, and so it's, it's easy to have a conversation with people because people understand, have a mindset that is gleaned from that, for one, one way or the other, from that knowledge. So um, that, is, that is always favorable. Um, again, relying upon the internet, interweb joint uh, for communication is um, tenu tenuous because there's just so many interme intermediaries and, and additionally. And so what we observe, well... So that's a positive, and we're looking at some of the recent content that is shared, the uploads. Uh, we consider how receptive kinfolk are in the Afropean cyber, cipher, uh, how, how receptive kinfolk are in terms of including the phenomena of spirituality within the conversation, because we, see, we have yet to see that explicitly, intentionally, uh, or, and or diplomatically done. We've see, we see discourse about uh, involvement with uh, Muslims. We know the, the general culture within Europe is increasingly secular and, and, and further distrustful towards organized religion. We understand that. But at the same time, particularly in the, in the experience of being mixed, there, we do also just similarly, just in terms of, um, again, with world civilization, having a literacy about the histories and cultures of the world, having a literacy <clears throat> and functionality about the religions of the world, 
the theologies, the beliefs, the practices around the world, the rituals. Because when we talk about being mixed, it's not just an Afropean thing. Uh, and even Afropean isn't just Afropean. Because kinfolk who are of African ancestry might also be Desi, Paki. And additionally, with all due respect, so uh, when, we, when we talk about this experience and getting beyond the identity rhetoric and looking at ancestry, at honoring our ancestry and, and focusing on, not on identity but on relationship, and honoring our relationship with all our relatives. So this is where we bring in the native heritage from this Western Hemisphere, that the, the, West, the Eastern Hemisphere is killing each other to, to remember. Uh, that's part of the purpose we observe, um, we, we study, and we recognize within the first contact in the past 500 years. Um, there's a healing and, and a medicine from this Eastern Hemisphere, that the, from the Western Hemisphere, that the Eastern Hemisphere is in need of. And so that's part of the, our interest of having this discussion. And that in in involves spirituality, not with the purpose of proselytizing, not with hidden agenda that we know is, is rife within religiosity, but just functional re re um, literacy, and then also finding solutions, because the solutions significantly involve spirituality. Because particularly in the United States, the solutions require an identity beyond the, the boundaries, the fine, the fine lines and boxes of the United States. Because when we talk about identity politics and, and whether people are black or whatever, and I, we see that discourse within the, in the UK about whether it makes people are black and, and how people identify in other words. You know, let's get off that. Stop identifying and eliminating ourselves and viewing ourselves with a lens of somebody else's hatred and, and, and not even hatred. At the end of the day, it's, it's, at the end of the day it's, all, it's all one love. But near the end of the day, it's not hatred. It's just a matter of like, just pure conquest of just like, okay, this is the imperialist mindset. Um, and, and the UK is probably much further familiar with this than the United States because the United States, again, is drunk um, and just like, all right, let's go off that. The imperialist mindset is basically a matter of, okay, we got this, we're in control, how do we keep it? How do we big up? Well, who's our competition? So when we talk about domestic society, it's a matter of knowing how to manipulate people, knowing how to keep people down, how, how to make them productive and contribute to the system, the war machine and, and the conquest of the nature, the p raping and pillaging of Mother Earth in Amaka, how to, make, how to lead the workers with carrots and sticks to do that, to do that work. Um, and so in, in, in order to, to prevent any particular faction within the domestic society of raising up too much, it's a matter of knowing how to do the divide and conquer, pitting the civilian uh, segments against each other. So they fight each other rather than collect together and, and, and overthrow the imperialist uh, authoritarian construct. So the, all these boxes and everything else like that, is, is, is the purpose of that is to facilitate the divide and conquer and just reducing people to, to just a box and then establishing policies of the carrots and sticks, the rewards and punishments along those boxes and then that's why it's always you know, which box do you fit in and then the politics the economics the social do you get invited to this joint do you get accepted into this school do you get that job it's all predicated upon those boxes and those allegiances and and those methodologies all those strategies and tactics to vying within the imperialist construct but it's all divide and conquer so particularly in the mixed experience we are called not by any authority of earth but we are called just because of our nature of existence to transcend those boxes, just to reconcile our own existence, let go of the identity. It's not about ourselves as individuals. That's the idolatry of today, as I said before. Individual individualism is the idolatry of today. It's the opiate that 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 directs ourselves to to the the fixations of screens and the the, the oracle. So. Let's get off that. Let's get off the identity joints and look at relationship, nature, our relatives, all the beings around us, our blood relatives, our bond relatives, the ones that are singing right now from the, from the treetops, the ones that fly above, the ones that crawl underneath, the ones that just done tore up our corn plants this past week. Ugh! All our relatives, holy and sacred. Big up. That's, that's what we So when we ask, when a kid asks, like, who are we? Where are we from? Yo, I'm my relatives. And then... When we talk about being mixed, that's when we talk about it's the same as everybody else. I honor all my ancestors. So black, white, this, those are colors. What are you talking about? Let's talk about lands. Let's talk about the Ebo River, uh, the the Yoruba River, if you like, uh, the Twi, the the Wolof, the the, uh, the Hausa, Zulu, House of Humble, Lota. 
the Ganges. Those, those are the, the, it's not even identities. Those are the heritage. Those, those are our lineages. So that's what we ask for. And when, and when somebody comes from multiple lineages, that doesn't just come from one fixated um, preset um, familiarity, then we find the language to articulate that. We can say earth uh, and otherwise are multiple. So, but anyways, getting outside of the box is getting outside of the identity. The whole notion of intersectionality is so sterile. It's so self-objectifying. It's like, it's so hypocritical. It's so, not even hypocritical, it's self-defeating. It's self-hatred. Uh, it's very privileged self-hatred um, and self-affliction and, and recruiting people, passive-aggressively, nastily recruiting people into that self-hatred. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do shade. I'm trying, I'm trying to help sober things up. Oh, I'm so pretty. I'm so pretty. All right, anyways. So do I, do I clown enough yet? Now, mosquito bite, uh, other things as well. We don't have to go into all, all my markings of my red bone, my, my red bonedness. Um, I'm not finished with this though. Come on, we got further to say. We got a pair. <laughs> and we actually are still in the middle of, 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 of meal, so on. We have said blessings for this. Oh, it's sweaty, it's sweaty, it's sweaty. Oh, it done made the adhesive, probably made from ground up animal hooves um, further uh, difficult to remove from the surface of this beautiful pair. Big corporate produced pair. Beautiful pair, appreciative pair. Ay ha. Um, so we 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 uh, we're looking at what the kinfolk are talking about, um, and then we're discerning, and we're endeavoring, we're inviting reasoning, and uh, seeing how much kinfolk are responsive to what we share amidst all the the aesthetics that we present, um, and 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 talk substance about solution, uh, because where we're at, I mean, again, to be honest. How about that? Let's stop playing with that and just go. Um, what the challenge is is that where we are at in terms of our relationship with society and civilization is that our solution is outside, off the grid. And that might not be the same viable, optimal, preferable, favorable solution for Afropeans in, in Afropea. Mm -hmm. So how do we negotiate? How do we have honest reasoning and mutual building and support? What is the place of Afropia in Europe, in the world? <clears throat> but particularly how, how receptive are Afropeans and all additional kinfolk in the mixed race community um, amenable, ready, prepared, willing, interested, in, in motivated, inspired, encouraged to have the conversation reasoning with um, spirituality readily, comfortably included within, within that. Uh, Rastafari provides a very beneficial vibration, um, like host to have that conversation because again Rastafari is coming from the experience of affliction um, it's coming from experience of liberation it's coming from a, an experience of suspicion towards authoritarianism it's coming from an experience of not trying to convert people or conquer people that's part of its antithesis to the nature it's a very natural um, loving there are th there are the um, the biases prejudices ignorant ignorances <laughs> uh, even within Rastafari, it's not a utopia, um, but it does, in terms of having these types of uh, discussions, these types of reasonings, the culture as a norm for, for hosting these conversations is helpful. I've shared a story on a number of occasions, and we receive a favorable response generally in each of these occasions. I share a story. Usually when I share the story, 
it's when I'm on a bus and it's when I'm near the, a driver or near enough and there's been an incident where another uh, vehicle operator of another vehicle has done something very inconsiderate cut up cut off the driver or block a block an intersection or whatever else block the intersectionality um, and the bus driver has to be cool and calm. They got they got responsibilities. They can't get heated or whatever else. They got to keep everybody on the, on the bus copacetic. So, like it's kind of like if somebody was in their private situation and, and they did that to them, it's like oh disrespect. Ah, I know what that's like. I stop. It has been over a decade since I've driven a vehicle, but I know what that's like. As as calm as I can be, we we can we can become different beasts when when driving. And when somebody does that disrespect, it's like yo, they've just they dehumanize me they have they devalued my life i can nah we that we can the road rage so i know what that's like not 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 accepting that but i know what that's like so but bus drivers can't do that they can't even like cuss or, or i mean generally speaking some do and that hey but like they gotta they gotta keep that demeanor because that's their job so knowing that when when i've seen that just within the past year or two i've shared this story this is the story and it's like this um there are many different types of ants in the forest. Beautiful ants. There are worker ants, there are army ants, there are even flying ants, ants that fly. One time when I mentioned that part, there was another passenger who was like, yeah, I know about that, that was all the flying ants. And I said, yeah. Um, so, you know, there's worker ants and army ants and flying ants and then there's ignorance. That, that tends to get a, a smile from the drivers and everything else. And they're like, that, that's ignorance right there. Um, anyways, that's, I just reminded of that. All things and praise. All thanks and praise. All thanks and praise. Serious. All right. Um, what else we got to talk about? I'm feeling I must be nice right now because I seem energetic and sing songy and everything. Wow. Eyes cleared up somewhat, still, still reddish. Um, and again, just earlier today, excretions um, removed upon awakening. Um, sweating up a storm. Beautiful heat, beautiful warmth. Um, Minimal electricity. Minimal -la 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 -la. All right, what else we got to share? What's the point? What's going on? Gotta be. There's like three things at least. So urgent. What else to share? Ah, yeah, yeah. I did the thing earlier today. Yeah. Um. Ah, the. So I talked about the the Afropeans. Um, talk about the reasoning. Ah, so talk about how we like what we observe in terms of our our reconnection with the Afropeans. So, actually, I, I see the sister uh, the sister Monica's uh, YouTube channel over a few years ago. Reach out and briefly, and there was a brief exchange. This is probably before I go to Denmark, and that was two years ago. Um, and it seemed like she would she was just comparatively recent and posting at that point on YouTube. By that point, things were waning. Like I said, I'm ready to leave the country without the prospect of ever returning here. So, like my state, my life is in that state. It's other than a matter of like, yo, well, let's 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 do a call. Well, actually, I might have reached out in that respect, but that's been a minute. Um. So, but since then, like it's been off off the radar, and even when looking for things here and there, haven't seen much. And we were, and again, we recognize like there's a lot of inactivity, a lot in the mixed scene, in the mixed heritage scene. There's a lot of kinfolk who come and go. Um, a lot of kinfolk who are going strong for a year or two years, um, even to the point of getting OG status. But then at some point, psh, it's off, off the radar. And even in, in, in a number of occasions in reaching out to kinfolk personally and, and like connecting with kinfolk and saying, yo, what's going on? So just like, yeah, life is going in a different direction. Don't have availability, uh, the motivation, the energy. Um, and it's tough, but I mean, we understand, but at the same time, it's difficult because in that sense of community and everything else, like, wait, hold up, what's going on? Like, this is supposed to be life. So, man, it, 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 it's life. So, um, take a bite of the pear. Beijing bicycle.
and beyond. So, um, that's the scene about two years ago, and then uh, been been away. Difficult to find a meaningful conversation, like kinfolk that are actually talking about something, in the, particularly in the mixed race, even just in the world. Um, it's difficult to find, and that's one thing we what we observe about the whole the phenomenon of internet connection, with all these abilities of like finding things and search, and people talk about the acronyms. Recognize that the acronyms. Um, is basically a process of self-destruction. That's something we're supposed to be talking about too. Self-destruction, like it's it's self self-removal. When people are using those things, it's like it's it's like people are like literally inviting the, people's own personal replacement. Plain and simple. Doing uh, enlisting a machine to do this, enlisting a machine to do that, is just enlisting a machine to replace that person's existence so be mindful of that and and and, and accordingly so that also ex explains some of the, the attachment to the screens um so let's t talk about that note well have we finished talking about mixed uh well we'll go with the, we'll go with the riff um self-destruction we recognize that people beings humans uh, I might have shared this in a recent joint, maybe in the past few weeks. Uh, there's just been so many. Um, basically, it's just nature and recognizing that once a, a, a person, a being, um, starts to produce seed, that person is in a stage of self-destruction. And the life force that is the person's seed and how the person treats that life force is the way in which that person is proceeding in that path of self-destruction it's not supposed to, it's not meant to be a nihilistic type of thing it's not meant to be a pessimistic type of thing it's just recognizing like the physiology and the 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 spirituality and the the the, the compre comprehensive elements of earthly existence um exemplified amplified example within the seed the life force now for women it's something that's involuntary it's natural it's naturally cyclical um, and, and it's very, it provides the woman with mindfulness <coughs> and motivation of doing something that is procreative, bringing life, regenerating life, uh, particularly in the interest of uh, and the methodology of providing in, in future years, in future generations. So uh, that's for women. For men, it's a different thing. It's much a contest of wills because the way in which the man expels that life force is through generally his own volition. Uh, but in doing it, it's his self-destruction as well. Um, and so when he's he's mindful, he devotes that process to one woman and invests his life force in that one woman and brings forth life from that one woman and devotes himself and his concentration, his materiality in that relationship. That's the optimal, preferable methodology. When he's unmindful of that and just wait, just spends his life force here and there and everywhere, um, that's that's the nature of his self destruction. That's the devaluation of his life and, and the susceptibility accordingly. So it is what it is. Now all adults who've gone through that process of puberty are in that process of self destruction. And again, just very naturally, we tend to congregate with people who live in a, in a culture, a way of being that is increasingly proximate with our own, who share a similar methodology of self-destruction, a cooperative methodology of self-destruction. Again, it's only natural. It is natural. Um, now, in that process of self-destruction, there's pollution. There's dust that's curled. There's dissonance. There's stress. There's all the different types of things that are put upon others and that affect negatively affect others in these different processes of self-destruction. Drug abuse, um, promiscuity, uh, people call it um, fornication, um, enslavement, um, robbery. These are all different methodologies. Violence, uh, when we talk about gangster warfare and additionally government warfare, it's all self methodologies of self-destruction. 
and the pollution that's caused from these self-destructions varies, but it affects others as well. So um, whilst each may be entitled to their own respective methodology of self-destruction, it's another situation concerning the pollution. And when we, when one is polluting, unduly polluting another person with, what, with the one's methodology of self-destruction, then there's the necessity of reconciliation. Be like, look, you know what? That's your stuff, methodology of self-destruction. We do the self-destruction in a different way. And it, like, it's beneficial for you to keep that pollution from your self-destruction away from our methodology of self-destruction, whatever our pollution is, and vice versa. We do our best to keep our pollution away from you as well. So, um, again, it's, it meant, it's something to be mindful of. And already I'm starting to like get, get weary in terms of fatigue, I was just talking and talking. It's been half an hour now. Wow! And uh, we, we like this this joint behind me, the domicile where I'm at right now, is probably the junkiest it's been. Easily, well, basically, in a long time, long time. As much of what we have to share at the moment. So, there are other things, but I'm not going to struggle to try to remember it, and I'm just going to work on relaxing because that's that's the duty at the moment we're getting to, ready to do. So, again, we give all thanks and praise to the Most High. Bless the love and peace and the light to fire.